Hi everyone, and welcome back to lab number two. In a recent video, we took a look around lab number two here, just in this immediate area, and I had lots of requests to take a look at what's in the back half of lab number two. And as you see in the intro picture, I have some pretty interesting devices hanging out back there. So let's go take a look. Here we are standing in the doorway of lab number one to lab number two, and here are some of the projects that will be coming up in the future. So we'll be restoring these together. Lots of really neat communications receivers here. In a moment, we'll be heading right down this aisle to the back side of lab number two. So in the previous video, because of the way the camera was sitting and the miking and everything that you see over there, the miking was all over in this corner and I was showing you around the lab, but I couldn't turn the camera around because of the mic and everything. So in this video here, I'm using a different camera and mic so I can kind of move around in amongst all of this stuff and trip over tripods and things like that. So what I'm going to do is move over here and I'll show you another very neat project that's coming up. And that would be that Stromberg Carlson radio receiver down there. Very collectible receiver. So that will be coming up shortly. This is that Panasonic RF4900 and a DAC transceiver right below it. At the top is a little blue GE radio. That'll be a restoration. I'd get a little closer to it, but I'll end up hitting this thing right here. And this Philco radio will be coming up as well. This Heathkit 2 meter transmitter and receiver is another project that's coming along with this sweep generator up here. So two neat projects right there. Let's back out of here carefully so I don't trip over anything. Lots of cables and stuff over here. So lots of neat projects here. Here are those 10 tech transceivers there. And the Eddy Stone on the bottom with a big MOSFET amplifier. There are some big transformers inside that MOSFET audio amplifier. And then there's another one over here as well. So I'll end up going through those. Here is that SX28 receiver. Just lots and lots of projects for us to do together. Here is this Gonset Communicator 2 with the VFO. And over here is the little amplifier. You can see the 826 tubes inside. So for those of you that own these amplifiers right here, you'll know that Finding 826 tubes for these things that are not gassy is a real challenge nowadays. So the trick to that is make sure the ones that you find have the getter spots in the base. Many of these 826 tubes did not have getter spots. The ones that don't have the getter spots are very gassy now. And letting them, you know, letting the filaments glow and, uh, you know, turning the plates a little bit red or orange for a long period of time will not fix them. They need to have the getter spots. So... If you're going to buy 826s for audio use, it seems like they're pretty, you know, sought after for audio now as well. Or for RF use, always make sure that they have those little chrome looking getter spots in the bottom and you should be okay. If you're going to order those up, I just saved you a really big headache. There's many, many of those on the market do not have getter spots. They were just made that way. And they've drawn air through the base seals where the pins go through the, uh, through the base of the vacuum tube there. So this is a Bulova radio receiver that was recently done, I think on Shango 066's channel. He had one that was just like it. So you get to see another one on this channel. Hello, Shango, if you're watching. I enjoy your channel. Great channel you have. There's another Zenith on the top. Console tone with a bunch of decaying knobs. What else is new for the Zenith stuff? So I'll have to find some knobs for that or make some up. Another Belmont over here, Belmont radio receiver. Unfortunately, this one, it's very collectible, but it has a horribly cracked case. And somebody glued it before I got my hands on it and did a really horrible job of that. So I'll have to end up doing some work to that. Maybe I'll just end up painting it a solid color or something like that. Unfortunate, but the crack is pretty extreme. When I do the restoration, you'll see what I mean. Here are the Moro Twins, very neat receiver and transmitter pair. So way back when, if you wanted to go mobile and you were a ham radio operator and wanted to transmit from your car, this is what you would have hanging in your passenger side footwell. 
So if your big old steel car wasn't heavy enough, you'd have this weighing down the passenger side. And of course, you know, whoever sat on the passenger side would be knocking their knees against this. And if that's not good enough, the power supply is also another huge component that's connected by these umbilical cables. So neat old times. At any rate, we're going to end up restoring both of those together as well. That should be a lot of fun. So there is the Moro twins. Here's a little tube tester I have. Oh, here is the uh, HQ129X that somebody with very long fingernails has gouged the paint off right around this control. It's just been dragging their fingernails. Who does that? And over here as well. So I have a brand new faceplate right in this little package right here. So we're going to end up putting that on together. And I have a brand new box of knobs for this as well. So I should make this HQ129X look brand new. These are fantastic receivers. Great receivers to, to use and cruise around the band with. Listen to some DX. I really like the Hammerland HQ129X receiver. Probably one of my favorites. Aside from the Raquel's, which you'll see here quite shortly. So moving along here. Here's another tube tester right here. So this is the ones that you would normally find in either a grocery store or a pharmacy. And way back in the day when your television or radio broke down, you would take all the tubes out of that television or radio, put them in a bag, and of course you'd be confusing them all at the time, especially if you had multiples. And what you would do is you would bring them down to your pharmacy or to a grocery store and you would use their free tube tester. So it's a self-service tube tester. You'd test all your tubes, find out which one was bad, and then you would call the, you know, the person that is running the grocery store or pharmacy and he'd come over with a key and unlock this and he'd pull out the drawers and find you the tube that you need and you would pay for it and off you went. You'd fix your own television or your own radio. Quite a different time. So that tester works very, very well for testing tubes. So if I turn around here, there it is. The UFO finder. So this is an engine analyzer known as a UFO finder. So if you search on Google or on the internet, you type in engine analyzer UFO finder, you'll find lots of information on this thing. So we're going to end up restoring this thing together. So now this is missing quite a few parts and pieces, and I have a, a bunch of really neat ideas for this that would give us a, a pretty neat project. So I could restore this thing back to, you know, exactly what it was, or I was thinking of actually installing a night vision camera on this thing and having it point towards the sky. And since this is, you know, a, a full size electrostatic CRT, I could probably get this to display the sky on here. It would be kind of neat and actually make this thing do what people are nicknaming it. Make it look at the sky basically is what we would do. Of course, you know, finding UFOs, whatever, but, you know, it would be kind of neat just to make it do that. So let me know in the comments below. Would you like to see this thing restored as an engine analyzer? Or would you like to see this thing converted into, you know, something else, into some neat little device? Either or, it would be a very, very neat project. So there is that. So lots of projects over here as well. All stuff that we're going to end up restoring so a neat old Geiger counter down there. Some signal generators, an old tram. So there's a tram Titan II right there that we'll end up going through. Big old VTVM. Look at the size of this meter. That'll be kind of a neat restoration. Just lots and lots of projects. Now all of these are all vacuum tubes. This is all sorted in here. These are all vacuum tubes that are all sorted, and this is all unsorted over here. So all the stuff that you see up here and down through all of here is all unsorted, but I know exactly where things are, so I'm not too worried about it. But anybody else would sure have an issue. The stuff in this is sorted, in this case is sorted, and everything else around here is not. So all of this stuff is just tubes and boxes. This is all capacitors and parts and pieces in here. Just different types of parts and pieces in here. This other side here is all brand new electrolytic capacitors. I'm turn this around here a little bit. So you can see all the uh, labels on there. Just all different values. Hopefully it's not too dark back here. So I have the, uh, the gain on this camera turned up really high. 
So more tubes. This is just all vacuum tubes up in here. This is only some of them. So lots of tubes up in here. Lots of 12AX7s and 12AU7s and Telefunkins and Amperex tubes in here. And lots more tubes over here. Older radio tubes down in here and some transmitting tubes. And these are all rectifiers in here, 872s and 5R4s and things like that. And these are all RF power tubes on the bottom here. All sorts of stuff. Big transformer there. Look at the size of this thing. That is an extremely heavy piece of iron, let me tell you. So it's getting pretty dark down here. Hopefully there's enough light. It looks okay in the viewfinder. Hopefully it's lit up okay. I just had to move the scope down here so that I could move around. And let's see, what's on this? I'll go back over here. So I'll show you some of the stuff over here. So this is a spare spectrum analyzer for lab one. So it's a 3585A, very nice analyzer. This is another Stanford Research SR785, so it's an audio analyzer, frequency counter. These are some DX100 transmitters that we're going to rebuild together. So there's three of them here. You can see all three of them. Now the person that owned these before me removed some of the transformers just to make these things a little lighter because they're really heavy and they're hard to move around. So we'll have to end up putting those transformers and chokes and stuff back in these things to bring them back. But that will be a project. So just lots and lots of stuff. Lots and lots of projects coming up. Variable phase function generator on the top. It's kind of a neat function generator. All this stuff back here, it's all tubes. All in here is all tubes. You see over here, different angle. These caddies down the bottom are all full of tubes. These are random parts and pieces. These are all carbon resistors in here. Lots and lots of carbon resistors that need sorting. Hours and hours of tedious fun there. So that's basically pull the box out, look inside, look what you're looking for, and shove the box back. More vacuum tubes here. And parts and pieces on the top. Just lots and lots of stuff. Here's a Johnson Viking Ranger. And let's see what else. A bunch of tech scopes with spectrum analyzer plugins, things like that. A needle radio over here that'll end up getting restored. We'll go around this side here and show you that. Needle General Electric. Here's a needle Halicrafters that'll end up getting restoration as well on the top. Very nice LaCroix scope. I really like this, this uh, LT344 Wave Runner. Very nice user interface with those things. And just more parts and pieces, a bunch of OS8 scopes. And it's just it's lots of stuff. Lots and lots of repairs. I'm sure some of you will recognize a lot of this Mesoner Analyst down there. Very neat old Super Pro right here. And I have another one on the other side that's in fantastic condition. So we'll end up going through that. This one here is parts. And if I showed you inside this, you'd understand why it's really rough. So this one is parts right here for the other Hammerlin Super Pro. Great receiver. So lots and lots of stuff. So that's an overview of lab number two. Hopefully I haven't missed anything. Here's some more of those Gonset Communicator 2s. Just lots of stuff. Oh yeah. Here's the big oscillator that I put together quite some time ago. I did a video using this thing. So I put a remote RF coil quite a ways away from this thing and lit up fluorescent tubes at the remote coil. So I did, you know, energy transfer from one to the other. I did a resonance demonstration. So I have some more projects and demonstrations to do with this coil here. And when I get to it, I'll most likely show you what's inside the bottom here. So lots of custom wound transformers and stuff in there that took me a lot of time. That took a lot of time right there to wind as well. So anyways, the oscillator project. That was my resonance demonstration video if you're interested in, in seeing this thing operate. 
A lot of people ask me what that coil is for on the side there. That is for a pickup. I can tilt that in or out. So that was to monitor what I was doing on an oscilloscope. That's what that was for. People say, why do you have a coil just hanging out there, not connected to anything? Well, remote pickup, that's all. And I think that's pretty much it. Nixie tube freak counter. Give me a neat little project here. And all of these power supplies. I believe this is the power supply right here for the Moro twins. I believe that's the power supply there. So pretty neat stuff. There's another mobile power supply here. Gonset power supply. I also have the uh, Gonset twins as well. They have uh, chrome looking faces on them. So we'll pull those out of a box and do those as well here pretty soon. I've got them hiding around here somewhere in the lab. So that is a quick look around lab number two and all of the future projects. Let me know what you think about the UFO finder over there and uh, I'll definitely consider that. I'd like to do something with that. I've had that for a while and it's one of those projects that every time I open the door here I go, oh, I really need to do something with that thing. So should I restore it to an engine analyzer or make it into something neat? Put your comments and suggestions below. As I mentioned before, I read every single one. If you're enjoying these videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So there'll be a lot of restorations coming as well. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. And if you want to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap the bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal inventions and designs, and there's also another 90 videos there as well, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comments section. So click on the link and it'll take you right there. All right, until next time. Take care. Bye for now.